A couple of biotech uh, names that we want to bring us tomorrow. Uh, coming up next on Squawk on the Street is Mark Haynes, and Mark has got a lot of earnings to bring you right now. Boy, do we ever. We've got, uh, let's see, Coke, Pfizer, J.P. Morgan, United Technologies, and much more. We'll check out all of the market reaction and get the before the bell uh, insight from analysts. analysts. Gold's at 25-year highs, copper at record highs, oil is surging. Is there still a way to play this commodity surge? We'll try and find that out for you. All that plus a check on tech and investment advice from a man with more than $100 billion at work in the market. I'm Mark Haynes on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange in my brand new birthday Crocs. Squawk on the Street starts right now. Live from the financial capital of the world, the New York Stock Exchange. This is Squawk on the Street. It is 9 o'clock in New York, 6 o'clock in L.A. It's uh, 3 o'clock in Zurich. About a half an hour before the opening bell. Good morning, everybody. I'm Mark Haynes. David Faber is back at Global HQ and up in the Squawk Luxury Box my colleague Aaron Burnett. Aaron? Good morning, Mark. And Mark literally glowing there on the floor in his yellow Crocs. Meanwhile, futures are higher. And of course, that comes after yesterday. The Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ finishing yesterday's session with their biggest one-day gains in a year. Let us show you where we are now. And as you'll see, certainly looking for a gain for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Uh, the NASDAQ also going to open higher. Solid earnings a reason. Also, those Fed meeting minutes yesterday that portrayed a possible end to rate hikes, giving investors something to cheer about. On the data side, the overall March consumer price index rose a better than expected four tenths of a percent, the core up three tenths of a percent, its highest in a year. And Mark is approaching right now, actually. We're going to be celebrating his birthday in just a few moments. Here he comes in his yellow Crocs. Mark, it's a big day for you. Why, uh... <laughs> Mark is miking up right now, folks, but it is Mark's birthday, and we're thrilled to celebrate it here. I'm going to sing for you later on in the show. No. I'm supposed to no. do something. I'm supposed to just slide in here He's... unnoticed. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We'll celebrate a few moments. Let's go to Bob Bassani now. He is still on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Another Crocs fan down there. Good morning, Aaron. And here's what's interesting. The core CPI numbers came in a bit higher than anticipated. As a result of that, the markets began to drop. During the morning, earlier on, we were right near a five-year high in the S&P 500, and that got people rather excited down here. Let's talk about some of the stocks that are moving here earlier on. Dow Earnings Day, six Dow components reporting earnings here. Let's talk about a couple of them. First off, Pfizer beat the estimates. Revenues were a bit on the light side. Guidance for the full year roughly in line. Most of the gains, though, were in managing expenses. J.P. Morgan came out. They beat their estimates. Profits up 36 percent, like several financial companies. They reported lower credit card problems. That is certainly very good news. Losses in the, uh, were good. Uh, lower losses uh, in the credit card division, investment and consumer banking were particularly good. IBM beat the estimates, but revenues were on the flat side. Prudential cut the price target there for them. Let's talk about United Technology. They raised their full year guidance. It's now roughly in line with analyst estimates. That's good news. They're sitting just shy of an historic high. In fact, they may open at a historic high. Coke beat by a penny. They were boosted by their Power Aid sports drink. That stock may open higher here. Now, look. You know how big the aerospace business has been. Boeing is sitting right near an historic high. Honeywell has been a big beneficiary of all the big moves in the aerospace business. They beat by a wide margin, Honeywell did. They had strength in the aerospace business. They had strength also in their automation divisions there. Prudential up the price target. Texas Instruments makes mostly semiconductors for cell phones. They posted a strong quarter. They gave good guidance. Finally, Motorola is a penny short here. They had good sales in mobile phones, but sales in the infrastructure business were weak. Motorola is going to open lower here. Let's go over to Bertha. She's standing by at the NASDAQ. Well, Bob, for Texas, definitely an earnings story. Yahoo did not disappoint, setting a positive tone after a pretty big day. Yesterday, we we're set to open higher. Yahoo up 6%. The uh, revenue number was slightly ahead of expectations when you take out those traffic acquisition costs. I call them TAC at 1.0, almost 1.09 billion. They have pretty good guidance, and they say they are on track to begin that search monetization. That's one of the things that people will be watching for with Google's earnings on Thursday. eBay is on deck for tonight. Street looking for 24 cents. Intel as well, 43 cents, uh, rather 23, 23 cents for Intel. 
43 cents for Apple. It's going to be a big earnings night tonight. Amgen, the one disappointment after the bell yesterday. The revenue line was disappointing. Also, a number of their key drugs, Epigen, Nupigen, Aranes, did not have the big push that they wanted on sales that folks were looking for in the forecast. That's down $1.27 as a result. Oil, also a hot topic on the street, and Sharon Epperson is looking at that. Thanks, Bertha. Well, the story here, of course, is going to be gasoline.